on the 20th of September. Now, here what are these? Some of these are related to the uh, fee structures for various, uh, uh, what do you call, situations, status, registrations, etc. of IPs, IPEs also, uh, but primarily IPs. So, 72C. Uh, now, here, the fee that we pay as individual IPs to the board uh, on a five-year basis from 10,000, it has been increased to 20,000 rupees. And in the case of an IPE, okay, now that has been increased to 2 lakh uh, from what was earlier. So this is a major jump in the fees. Okay, we had a uh, discussion papers on this. Uh, there's really nothing which is, uh, what do you call, of, which we need a clarification here. So we will proceed with that. A significant increase in the registration fees payable by IPs or IPEs. Now this IPE part is being for the recognition side, okay? It's different for when you become an IP. That will come later. Uh, same uh, amendment, then the fee that we used to pay to the board, quarter percent uh, earlier, now that has become one straight jump, uh, four time jump there. Uh, and uh, uh, the third proviso, which is what is uh, uh, inserted, is that the IPE also will now pay at 1% for services rendered as an IP. Okay. There is a separate fee payable when the services are rendered as a service, support service provider. And both these fees are payable in the case of an IP separately. That means for function A, which is support service provider, there is a separate set of fees. And similarly, when acting as an IP, that means as an insolvency professional, then a different set of fees, both one time and during the uh, course of carrying on any assignment. Uh, 72 CB, it is. Uh, basically to align with the amendment which was made in the CRP regulation, where a new fee called regulatory fee was introduced. The concept being that uh, all the professionals who are appointed during the process of CRP, uh, they do need to pay a certain amount of fee. Uh, I mean, on their behalf, okay. The, not they don't pay it, but the amount that is spent on the fees payable to them, a certain percentage of this, uh, to be calculated and paid to the board. Uh, similarly, uh, in, in terms of the resolution plan also, that has also been introduced. That is a certain amount calculated as per the formula given there will also be ne need to be paid to the board. Uh, one thing is must be understood here, these fees are to be paid from the resolution amount or the revenues of the corporate debtor. They are not to be deducted from the professionals appointed. There is not a tax. That must be remembered. There is no authority to deduct it. It's a cost being paid by the entity undergoing CIRP. Uh, ultimately, it is the creditors who will pay any, any such fee uh, affects what is their realization for getting the benefit of the process. That's the concept behind it. So they pay a fee because they are getting the benefit of a resolution process uh, under the infrastructure created by the state. Then regula regulation 12, subregulation 2. Now here, uh, this has been amended again that, uh, you know, the amount uh, which was there earlier for an IPE, now that has become uh, 2 lakhs, okay. Now this is recognition as an IPE, that is the step one. Registration of an IPE as IP is step two. Okay, again, this is related to the fee. Uh, pay to the board. Uh, this is for what an IPE will pay. Uh, with a clarification, this is the third proviso that was inserted that uh, where in case the IPE is registered as an insolvency professional and earns certain revenues from that uh, income stream. Now, that is not to be calculated for this 1% because that is to be paid separately.
again aligning with uh, when the ipe acts as an ip they also are bound to may, uh, ensure that certain regulatory fee as uh, prescribed uh, or specified under uh, regulation 31a of crp regulations they will also have to pay so the duties and responsibilities of an ip whether individual or an ipe act, acting as an ip are largely identical Uh, then the last uh, amendment which came on the 28th of September and that was the substantive one where the definition of professional member uh, uh, regulation to uh, 1G has been modified to include for the first time now all that the previous amendments were more like preparatory in nature uh, and this is where the substantive part has come in that an IPE recognized by the board under 13 regulation 13 and who has been enrolled as member of an ipa which means that if an ipe wants to become an ip first they have to enroll themselves with an ipa and then get registered as an ip and prior to that obviously because they are an ipe that means they are already recognized under regulation 13 uh regulation 42 uh, again just to clarificatory that any partner director of the ip who is proposed to which ip wants to act as an ip now th their partners and directors also have to be fit and proper person as specified under clause g of sub regulation 1 Okay, now comes the actual registration part, IPE uh, registering itself as an IP. There is a non-refundable application fee of 2 lakhs. Uh, this is to the board. What is payable to the IPA comes before this and that is separate. Uh, now, when the IPE takes on an assignment as an IP insolvency professional, uh, that means IRP, RP liquidator, then only a partner or director who is an IP and holds a valid authorization for assignment has to be nominated to sign and act on its behalf. Now, the word act is relevant here. Uh, there were some queries of people who said, okay, if an IP has, let's say, four directors, all of them have fulfilled this criteria, they are all IPs, they all have a valid AFA, and uh, one of them is nominated as the signing partner, then during the process, can this second, third, or anyone else step into the shoes of the first one uh, to either uh, on a temporary basis or for the balance period? For this, there is a question mark here. This part of it is uh, not clear. But if you see the word sign and act, which means that the nominated person has to do both, it it's not, the CRP process is not, uh, uh, to be managed by committee in the sense by a group and nobody knows who is actually acting so the person who is going to be responsible for carrying out the entire process as the nominated ip should be the one who is nominated once uh, and as this regulation stand today we do not know if the person can be changed in between and if so under what procedure Okay, that part is not clear. Uh, the next one, uh, now this is about the objective, uh, modification in the objective clause, where it has said or, that it's a, the uh, IP whose objective is to provide support services to IPs or to carry on the activities of an insolvency professional or both. Uh, now, the other regulations when they talk of, they require that first, there is a recognition, which means that the IPE has already got recognized as somebody uh, who, who is going to offer support services. And then only that they, it can get itself registered as an IP. So the word or is uh, a bit of a question mark. I think the answer, uh, maybe it is to be read as that you can be IP for support services only or support services and IP 
but you can't be the other way around that means you can't be only for as a ip and not have support service because that recognition is under uh, regulation 13 which is required to be registered as an ip and that's my reading of it uh, the last one is just a clarification but this is a major different uh, there is a change here uh, that in when it comes to companies who are ips private limited public limited it is only the equity share that is it's now clarified that the control is only through equity share uh, holding this might have uh, implications on how to calculate net worth whether you can have preferential shares which can also be part of the net worth but not part of the uh, control and whether a third party who is not an ip uh, could invest in preference capital and to a significant extent also so we have finished uh, all the amendments that are there and we did expect it to be quick so now we can take questions or any comment anybody wants to say anything clarification sir this is rajendra agrawal hadi i believe that there is no restriction on the individual ips to seek and take support from ips for their uh, assignments uh, there is no th that part an ip can take even today the support service from any recognized ip and he need such ip need not be a member of that ip so ultimately no ip has to pay the support service fees to ip so there is no restriction on payment of their fees sharing of fee is different from payment of fee okay uh, ha what uh, sharing means that i get let us say x amount and out of that i have a deal with somebody that i will share with you but that person is separately appointed then i can't share okay but if case in case i appoint a support service from on my own not through the crp process and their cost is included in my consolidated fee then that's not called sharing because that is my payment to that technical so means, is, but yeah <laughs> so it means suppose i am getting 100 rupees and my sharing arrangement is say 50 50 then i can have a engagement letter saying that 50% of my fees will be paid to ip as a support service fee no that is not allowed you have to split the two and uh, each one is uh, actually approved voted upon by the coc separately so how much for the ip how much for the ipe uh, will have to be distinctly different has to be paid separately and one it can't be by saying a percentage of my fee is theirs no however no sir no, my let, question let, ha my question is different ki fc or cirp has approved 100 rupees as a rp fees now i need a support from ipe so if i have arrangement with ipe that 50% of this fees i will share with you for support services is it wrong as long as these they are not appointed officially as a separate appointment if it is part of your appointment then you can appoint anybody who so ip ho non ip ho koi fark nahi padta because then they are not giving you support really speaking in the status of the ip but as a set of people right okay a form it could be anybody so it's not covered in such a case uh, an ip who appoints people and pays them from his or her own fees those yes. are not called as appoint even they are not even treated as professionals in this crp they are the ip team okay yes sir yes sir my question sir if one of the partner or director of the ip is engaged in any assignment yeah any action against the ip Uh, we lost you for some time. Can you repeat? Which may our actually be? Sir, if any partner or director who is handling the uh, matter, say IRP matters of the IPE, and if any disciplinary action is against that IPE, then whether all the other partners will be held liable or uh, only that IP uh, insolvency professor individual will be liable? 
see liability uh, is uh, really speaking of two types liability to the part stakeholders involved in a particular resolution or liquidation process yes, okay sir. any action of act or of omission commission by the ip whether who all are going to be liable the first obviously is the nominated ip okay, okay. yes sir that is the first person action against anybody now this is this is not written anywhere in the code or regulations because it doesn't have to be uh, the law of vicarious liability is generally known that one has to prove that others are liable whoever makes that allegation because okay. sir, the, the appointment will be of ipe not the ip no the, uh, the though the, the here one has to understand it it is like see the concept of this ipe acting as an ip is yes, largely sir. picked up from the audit firms or uh, you know secretarial firms who are appointed the firm is appointed there is a signing partner okay so it is the signing partner who takes the first uh, prima facie uh, what do you call uh, obligation and liability whatever it is the same thing here that though the ipe has been appointed at the same time necessarily a signing partner or director has to be nominated which means that person is the face of the ip for all practical purposes now the liability of any other partner or director of the ip would depend on the facts and circumstances of that case and whoever is making that allegation will have to prove it is normal okay normal law there is nothing uh, special about it it's okay. generally how it is done thank you sir Yes. Any other question? Which is Rathi here? Hadi. Ah, ये जो director हैं IPE के सारे director को IP होना compulsory है क्या? Yeah, if I remember, it is the majority, right? Ah, but abhi aap majority are, of directors will be IPs and majority is, of equity two, share. It is two. Equity. Ha. And equity shares are also the holding has to be by directors who are IPs. Nee, aapne likha Maj fit and proper. Ha, fit and proper. Yes. See, fit and proper is means. Doesn't mean that you have to be an IP. You have, you should not have any uh, issue with that. That means you should be able to fit it, even if you are not an IP. Means so, uh, so, so all those criteria which require somebody to become an IP, other than of course the exam, etc., the fit and proper criteria, every director has to fulfill that when the IP is acting as an IP. Sir, But can the, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, can the IPE do other, 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 say restructuring type of activities also, which is not related with insolvency? No, only huh. either support service or hmm. act as an IP or both, oh. or both. Okay. So they cannot do, they cannot take up any restructuring type of proposals and all that. No, no assignment outside the ambit of the code. Okay, of the code. Okay, okay. Okay. One more one more question, sir. Hadi. See, see, we have to form an IPE. So before. Before the name approval, before taking the name approval from a, you know MCA, whether we have to take approval from IBBI first for the name approval? No, no. ऐसा कुछ ये नहीं है. अच्छा. Then name approval. Ah, name approval. Please keep your mic. Please keep your mics on mute. Those who are not speaking. Yes, sir. Name. Name approval. No, there is no such requirement from the IPA or IBBI about name approval. No. But okay. you have to enroll with an IPA first before you can get registered with the IBBI. Okay, but no, but first we have to form the company. No, we have to take the name approval from. It can, 
MCA. It can be a company or it can be LLP. Yeah, yeah. Both are both. Sir, according to the new professional fees, the IBB charging every professional person has to be appointed after first October 2022. You have to pay to the IBBI. Yes. If my any statutory auditor is there, security agency is there, then I have to pay to the IBBI on those services. See, is security agency a professional? I don't think it is defined as such. It's the cost of CRP, but professionals are, IBBI I think has always maintained that only those who are regulated. And in terms of, if you look at what does the code say, it says, you know, advocates, accountants, and others like that. That means of the same nature. Security agency doesn't fit there. And oh, uh, I think there is my, a case my, my, uh, my earlier. Post. One second, one second. Uh, and these are professionals appointed because of IBC. Who would not be appointed if there is no IBC? So a statutory auditor is a requirement of Companies Act, not of IBC. So what I mean to say, auditor, valuer, mm -hmm. Any professional accountant? No, 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 don't mix, don't mix up the two. Auditor is Companies Act, valuer okay. is IBC. Haan. Okay. Mein hai. okay, okay, sir. Okay, I agree with you. And every, transaction any... auditor, uh, you know, transaction auditor, forensic auditor, that type, you know, special auditor, valuers, uh, advocates, uh, IPEs. Okay, uh, these are all professionals appointed only because of CRP or liquidation. So, yes, they are covered. No, but those my, who are... My, my only point is there, sir, that they, they have amended that when the bill has been booked, you have to make the payment to the every quarter on the first week uh, first week of uh, after quarter ah, to the IBA. Yeah. Even if my fees is not receiving, I am taking the services from uh, there. Okay, uh, Mr. Jain, first of all, you are asking an issue of implementation. Okay, and whether the provision was right or wrong, I made it clear in the beginning. Today's session, we are not going to discuss the validity, rightness or wrongness of any provision. As far as that is concerned, that's a separate uh, issue to be dealt with separately. We have all the regulations that we talked of today. On that, if you require any clarity, like the first question you asked, I think that we clarified. Professionals who are appointed under the code or required to be appointed under the code. The statutory professionals, they are also called professional, which, which are who are appointed because of uh, some other act would not definitely not be covered here. Because then you were, why not engineer, why not doctor? You know, if it's a hospital, all doctors are professionals. Will, will you pay uh, for that also? No, the answer is yes, Mr. Sood. Can't hear you. <clears throat> Something wrong with your mic. Hello, sir. Am I audible? One second. Uh, I am uh, Mr. Sooth was there first. Mr. Sooth, I think your mic is not working. We will come to you. Mr. Gokhale. Hello. Ha. Uh, sir, uh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm repeating this question. But uh, in a scenario like there is a regulation. Uh, which talks about the fee basis the claim amount. Now, suppose in this kind of a situation, uh, IP is appointed, say the claim value is less than 50 crores and he is appointed for uh, say 1 lakh rupees of fee per month. Now, in this scenario, can he take the services of the IPE and whether uh, the fee of the IPE can be a part of this 1 lakh which this IP is getting? Part of that, are you saying sharing of fee? Uh, sir, if we get a COC approval separately, say for 50,000 for this IP and 50,000 for this IPE. That's not sharing. That's separate. It has been decided by the COC that A will be paid so much and B will be paid so much. They are two separate fees. Yeah. So the regulation, what the regulation talks of is like the minimum fee for that specific claim amount. So even yes. that that requirement will also suffice, even though the uh, the fee is separate for the IP and IP and standard. No, one thing, one th one second, one second. IP yeah. and IPE added together is not the minimum fee. Okay, the minimum fee is only for the IP. IP, right. 
Okay, that's first. Secondly, now that there is a minimum, it can't be breached by agreement. Okay. Okay, that because that would be violation of law. So the right. minimum has to be paid. Okay. okay. So if you have contracted something lower than minimum prior to you know at the time of submitting yeah. your uh, code and IP one. And right. then, the, and by the time it gets admitted, now the new regulation has kicked in. The minimum will have to be paid. Okay. Because now it is statutory, right? Right. Now, don't ask me the next question that if you are contractor for higher, does it will it come lower? That is between you and the COC. Oh, many bolanga. So, so okay. IP is if it will be over and above that minimum IP fee. IPE fee is not the same as IP fee. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yes, Mr. So, do you want to try? No. My crab is your. Chat me daliye. Chat me daliye. Mr. Navandar, he is designed before. And I will come to you, Mr. Shah, after Navandar. Sir. If the IP who is appointed is sharing his fee with the or is the fee is divided between the IP and the R IP E, like in the previous example, he said one fifty thousand is between for the IP and fifty thousand is for the IP. The fees which was decided prior to this minimum this thing, whether the RP who is paying to the IP E, he has to levy the fees of point twenty five percent on that also. And then uh, collect the additional that twenty five percent or one percent from the uh, IP is also supposed to pay to the IBBI directly, so it will be double counting. Right, two hours. Okay. The amount paid by the entity, okay, is different from the amount paid by the person earning the income. Now here, this is like an expenditure tax. I'm just giving broad example. Ah, for the corporate debtor, it is the equivalent of an expenditure tax, and for the professional or the IPE or the IP, it is like a income tax. Like ah, I know. Don't quote me out of context. It, they are not taxes. They are regulatory fees. Okay, but the concept is like that. That both are paying tax or a charge. Now the charge that is paid by the entity. Is different. It has to be paid. It is not double counting. Okay, like uh, you know, that's why the example is of tax. But it, while this is not a tax, that you do pay GST, and then you also have to pay income tax. Okay, one is paid by this, one is paid by that. So that's how it is. It is not double counting. Double counting is avoided specifically when the IP does have a dual role. that certain stream of income is as by support service and so another stream of income as an ip the two will not be added twice so each one will be paid separately today the rates i think are same for both they may be different tomorrow the one may have be lower another may be higher or one may just be say okay nahi dekh karte hain we don't know but they are two separate okay different uh, each one is treated as a different service and paid differently Uh, uh, should I repeat my the question? IP the the IP of the IP while he is actually doing the job it is the IP E which is getting the revenue so the IP separately does not pay for that if that is also the IP IP will is paying it to the professional so he will have to pay one percent on that no IP E is paying Nei, because uh, there, there is no obligation question. no. Okay, so be clear about your question. Then I will see, be able to see, answer. See, uh, I have an IP who renders hmm. the service to any IP. Ha. Ha. Say, Mr. X Y Z, who is not my partner, he comes and says that, "Oh, Mr. Navandar, you give me the service." That is support services. Yes. Yes. So I provide him a service, and he pays me a lakh rupee month. Ha. Now, uh, he will be did. He will be required to pay one person on the fees which he is paying to me. As the regulatory fee under under thirty one a. Ha. Okay. Thirty one a two. He will be paying. Ha ha. Thick hai. Thick hai. Yeah yeah yeah. He will be okay. paying a one thousand rupees to IBBI. Ha. Thick hai. Yes. And I as an IPE when I receive my income. Ha. 
I will be also required to pay yeah. my one lakh. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, both yeah. of them are paying one one percent, one thousand. He is also paying one thousand. Uh -huh. I am also. Ha ha ha. Okay. The what is the pressure? Income. No, for one is paying on the expenditure, another is paying on the income. अब दोनों के बैलेंस शीट क्यों मिस कर रहे हैं साहब ये कोई पहली बार हुआ है क्या एक्सपेंडिचर टैक्स एंड इनकम टैक्स ऑन द सेम आइटम सो दे आर लाइक डिफरेंट दे सी हियर इन द केस ऑफ द आईपी बिकॉज आईपी इज नॉट पेइंग रिमेंबर दिस आईपी इज ओनली एन एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर एंड ट्रस्टी वो अपने जेब से नहीं दे रहा है वो इज बेरिंग द कॉस्ट द एंटिटी द कॉर्पोरेट डेटर ओके एंड अल्टीमेटली थ्रू दैन द क्रेडिटर्स So who takes the hit? The creditors take the. Hit. So it is actually the creditor who is paying that fee to the board because they have been given this framework to resolve their, uh, you know, debt, uh, you know, uh, default debt, etc. So this is a fee which ultimately the creditors are paying. And in the other case, it is an income for the IP. Income pe to dena hai, to le liya. So they are two different. Okay. and both are not paid by the same person there is no double okay. counting please don't confuse okay. ek side mein cd and indirectly the creditors in the other side whoever is earning the revenue they are two different things okay thanks thanks hello ha ji yes mr shah uh, sir sir a director or an hmm. equity shareholder of an ip Is hmm. also a partner say in a law firm. Can hmm. that law firm be appointed to provide legal services for the same IP or the case that they are undertaking? No, if the IP is appointing them or the corporate debtor. Again, ध्यान में रखिएगा. We we every word is important here. If the CD is appointing, that means the RP is appointing right. separately a partner of the IP E who is also got a law firm or is individually a lawyer. then there is a relationship which has to be disclosed there is no bar okay so disclosure is enough yeah related but see there is no bar on related parties under exactly. uh, igc there is a requirement of disclosure uh, at the same time also code of conduct becomes important but that is under the behavior of the ip it too many things you know you close relatives etc they are barred Okay, but professional uh, relationships are not specifically part. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other question? Otherwise, we will hand over to the IPA, and then they will take over on the process and procedure of enrollment as a IP. हाँ जी बोलिए Can't hear you. Uh, is it better? Haan, yes, yes, yes. मेरा मानना है कि IP के ऊपर restriction है number of assignment लेने पे. Hmm. So with IP, ये जब IP होता है, तो वो restriction कैसे apply होंगे? पहले तो ये बताइए कि IP पे कहाँ restriction है? There is a guidance. Okay. That an IP shall not take too many assignments, which can adversely affect his performance. Why number so high? Subjective. Hai. The number liya, but bank uh, me wo kafi David. Oh, that is outside the IBC. Yeah. yeah. Third parties yeah, yeah. we we can't discuss here. Private yes, arrangement. Yes. Okay. 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 Right. N Nitin. Sir, yes. Take over. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, participants, in case you have any doubt, I mean th that's a good opportunity. You can clarify them, and we have the faculty here with us, and we still have time. Uh, we started at four o'clock, and it is just four fourteen. So any any doubt, any clarification that you would want regarding uh, the interpretation. Or the maybe practical aspects related to this recent amendment, you can discuss it with sir. Uh, Nitin, I am here only, so you can complete your part. I think they are also equally keen to understand that. That you will charge how much, how much discount you will get. Tell me. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Right, sir. 
so uh, okay i'll what i'll do is i'll open the enrollment form that we have rolled out so that would provide okay i'll, I'll just tell you as to what are the, what are all the documents and the details so first first document that we require from an ite is uh, the board or the partners resolution which authorizes the concerned person filing the application uh, is authorization in this behalf so the person has to be duly authorized and as you would know it's a three stage process and ipe has to be first recognized by ibbi and then it, that, that a uh, recognized entity can get enrolled with ipa which i mean in, in our case is icsip and then a subsequent registration with ibbi so we would require the certificate of recognition of the ipe prior to their enrollment with us uh, then in case it is a company then we would require the corporate identification number details in case it is an llp then lpin uh, and then certificate of registration of the ipe so whatsoever registration it is whether it is a partnership firm or uh, it is an llp uh, that is or a company so certificate of registration in this regard then we would need the permanent account number details of the ipe the gst registration details then uh, the memorandum of association of the ipe uh, this is to see that uh, because most of the ipes i mean the ips that are uh, getting enrolled now they are already recognized by ibbi for uh, rendering support services to the ips so in case they have not modified their memorandum so they do need to do it prior to enrollment with us or uh, you can do it simultaneously while you file the application for uh, the alteration in the moa uh, you can file the enrollment application with us then uh, we would need uh, your net worth certificate and uh, when i say your net worth certificate i mean the ipe's net worth certificate uh, then the financial statement for the preceding year then uh, registration certificate granted to the directors or partners uh, as a case may be who are ips because as we know the majority uh, of the directors or the partners uh, have to be ips so we would need the registration certificate ibbi registration certificate then uh, they need to have by sir said that they need to be a fit and proper person so their afa uh, has to be also there uh, then payment receipts uh, the payments made for ibbi and ipa for uh, i mean enrollment and annual membership fee and registration so those also have to be given i think these are all the documents that we would need from your end and what i'll do is although i can uh, open that window here uh, i can show you the form that you need to fill for enrollment or what i can do is we will have your uh, email id we can send it over email also so in case you have any doubt uh, i'm always available for that so should we work out that way i can uh send you over email and then you can in case you have any query or in, you have any doubt you can ask us uh mr ravi shankar uh, are you looking to ask me something or uh, ravi sir sir not okay. to you sir i was trying to ask mr ravi prakash ganti okay sure sure ravi sir sir i have a small yes, one yes. i have one i have one or two queries sir sir uh, there is a limit of uh, maximum 10 cases we, out of which not more than 3 should be of uh, creditors claims for more than 1000 per head per comp cd there is a restriction like that okay so sorry sorry where where is this restriction yes sir it is there sir where this restriction that uh, see what is the maximum number of cases it should not take more cases which means that the there is a restriction which provides that 10 cases out of which no, where, more than 3 which which regulation does Uh, are you specific uh, referring to can you just okay. mention regulation number i need to search sir now because i know that regulation but i am not, not able then to then then check and uh, to the best of my memory and knowledge there is no number no, okay sir, it, is there, it is there sir maximum is then 10. tell me the number na baba one second, one second, one second. okay sir i'll tell that i'll tell that sir okay maybe i am wrong i am not saying so i am saying i don't i don't remember it please tell me the number okay, because just... if it is not there then the provision uh, the assumption itself would be wrong na so then my second question is not there anyway yeah. okay i'll just i'll search for it and then yeah yeah sure sure we are here only don't worry 
So then one more. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Asticine is given in code of conduct, and I think it's a uh, uh, code of conduct uh, rule regulation number twenty one twenty two something like that. It has come through a clarification in code of conduct. Yeah. Yes, twenty two. Um, clarification yeah. under twenty two. Okay. Yes. Right. Twenty two ka clarification. Got it. Okay. So yes. So what is the follow up question on that? Okay. So if I am an individual, I would have taken only ten cases out of which, as I said, no, not more than three kind of CRP cases only. And that restriction is only for CRP, sir, not for liquidation and personal guarantee cases. Okay. So if in case of a IPE. Is it like suppose there are three partners, they can take thirty cases, or what will be the? Yeah, I mean that would be my reading because uh, the code of conduct, as such, uh, I think largely is about uh, individuals, and uh, so the number of cases you could, as an IP, have be part of an IP and then take as an IP and be the signing partner or the nominated uh, director or whatever. You could also have an assignment in your individual name where the IP is not involved. Both are possible, so both will be added. Where the ones in your individual name plus all those in the name of the IP where you are the nominated person, but not where somebody else, some other partner or director is nominated. Obviously, that will not be added. You are not getting involved with that work. So okay, that's. Question number one. Second question is that there is restriction on uh, chartered accountants becoming partners with other uh, IRPs for we foreign can't, IPE. That we, you are... can't can, cannot answer that. <laughs> that is you ask that institute. <laughs> anyway, sir, that's my question, sir. Okay, right, sir. Thank you. That's it. Uh, any other question? Ravi, sir. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. Yes. Ravi sir, this is Anuradha Bisani. Yeah, uh, Bali. This is a question uh, relating to what uh, other Ravi sir was asking. Okay. If there are two IP in one IP, then now, suppose one partner, suppose he is not uh, well or for some reason he wants to uh, you know, get replaced or maybe move out from, from that CIRP process. So can, because the IP is appointed as the, uh, IP is appointed as IP, so can the other partner take over if he is not in within that restrictions of 10 CIRP and all that? Okay. Uh, you were there from the beginning or you joined a little late? Uh, no, sir. I was there. You were there. Because I mentioned this. I said this is not clear in the regulation. We don't know. Okay. Oh. The regulation is not clear on this as to how it will happen. I would assume that it will be that the IP as a whole will resolve that now from now on so and so and intimate all the people concerned uh, that would include uh, obviously the coc uh, the corporate debtor the uh, uh, board uh, the ipa concerned okay uh, these are the disclosures uh, would it include the uh, adjudicating authority i don't know okay i don't know how this will work out uh, because i still can't understand when the uh, order of admission of CRP is made by the A. Will they just write the name of the firm or will they insist that name of the firm plus the name of the individual? And if that individual's name has come in the order of appointment and admission, then definitely it has to be the replacement uh, procedure will apply, which means the name change also will have to get uh, by way of I mean, uh, order from the NCLT. Okay. So, so it, it these is are question like, marks. We don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we don't. Know. We don't know. It's like when we appoint statutory auditors for the uh, companies, we appoint the firm, and any one person signs the audit report. But uh, don't you have ADT? ADT one requires the name of the signing person also. Uh -huh. no? Yes. So that means you have to amend it. Hmm. <laughs> so same thing here also. My guess would be, because that is the only logical one, that yeah. adjudicating authority has to permit the change. Hmm. Okay. Matlab, yahan pe sirf ADT1 mein name change karke, fir se ADT1 file kar do, to chal jayega. Entity, matlab, jo partnership... No, the, the, the appointing authority there is the board or the uh, general body. So that's okay. 
Whereas uh-huh. here, the appointing authority from beginning is always the adjudicating authority. Okay. So the, the IRP is appointed uh-huh. by the AA. He may be nominated by anybody. Appointment, nomination is not necessarily binding on the AA. Sir, but replacement to COC call leta na, sir. Or uske baad kya hota hai? Haan, application to dena padta hai, but call to Fair. COC leta na. <laughs> no, right, that is only a proposal. Okay. A, a recommendation may be largely binding by practice, hmm. but doesn't mean appointment. All right, all right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Cabinet proposes, president appoints. Same. <laughs> Participants, in case anybody else has a query. And can I also request, uh, I can see, um, I mean, some numbers mentioned or admin mentioned as a name of the participant. So that will not help us in uh, confirming the CP. So please do ensure that uh, you mention your name. Uh, on that, I have a question again. Sorry, uh, Ravi sir, this is not related to the IP regulations. But sir, ye jo CP humko, uh, they are, even when we submit, they are saying it is rejected because you have not provided the complete list to them. Though we are mentioning our names here with IBBA number and everything. Nitin, you have to take care, huh? Yeah. <laughs> sir, we, we, in fact, I am myself involved into these things. So in case of any doubt, so we do even call up every participant uh, in case they can provide us any proof of their participation, proper proof, we confer the CP. We, we don't take it like this. So this has to be done after the uh, rejection from the IBBA? Still it can be... Ma'am, ma'am, IBBA neither approves nor rejects. It comes to your IPA. No, what I meant is in IBBA when we have to log CP hours, right? Correct, ma'am. We have to we have to submit right. We have attended this seminar. Uh, ma'am, uh, a, a minute. Uh, CPR the portal is IBBI, but IBBI is only the portal entry provider. That's it. They okay. do not get into actually giving the CPR. That credit is given by the IPA concerned. That means the IPA of which you are the uh, you are enrolled with. In okay. your case, it would be uh, Nitin only. So catch him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sir, I think it would be better if someone ensures use the CP certificate to all the participants. It will help us to get the claim the CP credit. Sir, what we have done, sir, sir, can I just clarify here? Gati, yeah. sir? Okay. Yeah. So uh, the practice that we have adopted is as of now, I'm saying as of now, is that we send a mailer uh, to all the participants uh, confirming their attendance and telling them that they are entitled for these many CPs as per the IBBI guidelines. So this is a practice that we have adopted, but uh, we are very soon going to uh, give the <coughs> certificate of participation to all the participants. So that practice is in the working and will very soon implement it. It should be followed by all the IAPs. Yes, so after this, uh, <laughs> sir, after this uh, event, we'll get a mail confirmation mail from you. Yes, sir, correct. So all those who have attended it, uh, they'll get a mail. Okay, sir. Sure. Thank you. So that one add-on question to this. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. How many days you take to confirm the submission? Means uh, I submitted uh, way back, but it is still in submitted mode only. So how many days you take generally to approve or reject the? Sir, in case in case uh, it is an it is pertaining to an event organized by ICS IIP because we have the attendance sheet available with us. So we do it immediately, right? But in case it is organized by some other IPA, so it takes time to get the attendance sheet from them. Or in case it is organized by us and uh, the person is, the professional member is uh, enrolled with some other IPA. So we also send it to them. So that may take some time. Okay. But we are, so you uh, send it to the thing. respective person's IPA first. Suppose okay. I am registered with uh, uh, CA Institute's IPA, so you will send it to them and then they will upload it. Yes, correct, sir. That is true because the attendance sheet is with the concerned IPA. Uh, okay.
So any doubt regarding any clarification that you would want regarding this regulatory amendment? Any thought process? I mean, any thought that you may have? And I can do one thing. Uh, I, I was thinking if I can share my screen and uh, open up the enrollment form that we've uh, rolled out for IPEs. Yeah, yeah. Go, go through that and also tell the people now how much are the fees, what you are charging. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. So uh, let me start with the fee itself. So fee is going to be 35,000, uh, which is one time, which is uh, the enrollment fee. And 40,000 is going to be the annual membership fee for ICSIIP. And because um, after 31st of, uh, uh, I mean, from 1st of October, if somebody enrolls, so half yearly fee, annual membership fee is to be paid. So that means it is going to be 35,000 is going to be the enrollment fee and 20,000 for this year, the uh, annual membership fee. And we are also in the process of uh, kind of conferring some more benefits. I mean, we already have our uh, publications and other things. So we'll probably also thinking uh, in terms of conferring some other benefits on the enrolled members. So um, as I said, I'll just, open up my uh, window just a second is it visible to everyone <coughs> enrollment form for ipes yes yes it's yes please okay. so this is the form that we have uh, made and we have circulated to so uh, i mean the details are provided so name of i'll start with the first one so name of uh, the LLP or the partnership firm or uh, the company that is provided then the registration number followed by the PAN number, the DSTIN, registered office, principal place of business, the address for correspondence, telephone number, name, designation and contact details of the person who is authorized to make this application and uh, the board resolution also would be required in this regard. So these details have to, are to be filled in. Then we proceed for uh, details of the directors or partners of the uh, IPE as on the date of application. So these details are to be provided. Now this includes the AFA number uh, and this is pertaining to the directors who are, directors or partners who are IPs. Uh, then we go on to uh, the net worth. Sole, sole objective now, uh, as I said, it is a three-stage three, three stage process. The IPE has to first gain recognition with uh, IPPI uh, and when they gain, I mean the IPEs were already recognized by uh, IPPI. So in their constitutional document, it is mentioned that they will, uh, they will uh, give support services to the IPs. So now because they are going to become an IP, so an amendment is required in this regard. Then the net worth requirements are there, which have to be there. Authorized capital, subscribed capital, uh, details of the shareholding or partners contribution in the applicant so these details are to be filled in then uh, so in case it is a partnership then the partners details and the, the these details are to be provided and in case it is a company then the shareholding details and directors interests are all to be provided uh, should, should i remain on this page in case you have any doubt or should, can i move to the next one just for curious someone is just a shareholder or a director does it really matter to you Sir, it is a requirement there, yes. No, no, no. What I mean is uh, someone is a shareholder, but not a director. He's an IP, but he doesn't become a director. And uh, uh, of course, the person who's a director need not be a shareholder, right? So both are required in your case. I'm just curious. Correct, correct, correct. correct, correct. Uh, may may Nitin. I clarify that? Sure, sir. Nitin. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the requirement is that majority of the shareholding, equity shareholding, has to be held by directors who are also IPs. Correct. Okay. Which Correct. means there can be shareholders who are not IPs. Correct. Shareholders who are IPs but not directors. Directors who are shareholders but not IPs. All that is possible. Possible. But the minimum is that, that the majority equity share has to be held by directors who are IPs. Rest koi bhi ho. That's okay. perfect, sir. That's my answer. So here they don't have any problem as long as that criteria is met. I want to. Yeah, the IPA cannot have more than what the regulation so, yeah. says, na? 
and they won't why would they nitin uh, i have one question uh, whether the partnership form can be a ip so you have mentioned that registered partnership can be a ip correct sir a uh, registered partnership can be ip yes i mentioned sir ha ah, it has been mentioned correct so i think ravi ji can uh, give the better answer ravi ji Just give me a sec. I will come back. Okay. Mr. Nitin, one doubt, sir. Yes, sir. So, what is the net worth required for a IPA, sir? Because during March 2018, there was a circular that one crore uh, net worth is required. Is that same thing or any yes, change, yes, sir? sir? Correct, correct. That that is the same. Same. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Sir, can I ask one small clarification to to the host? Yeah. Yes, you can ask it, sir. Okay, this may be regulation which has been changed the fees from point two five percent to one percent. Is the factor in prospective fact or from the retrospective fact? My, I mean to say, if the person who has done the work in the April May June earns some fees. So this will be applicable from first April or from the date of the notification. It it is prospective, Ravi sir. Uh, if you can clarify. First October. Ha. Uh, one second. Uh, the previous question, the registered partnership is okay. Regulation twelve includes LLP and registered partnership. Uh, what was the question now? Other question is that the the regulation for change of fees from point two five percent to one percent is effective prospective right or from first April twenty twenty two? See the regulate the the fee point two five to one, one is yeah. payable in April. I know, but but other person okay. who has earned some fees in the month of April, so, May, June, July. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, okay. No, whatever earning is earning. This is like like tax. Okay, we will not call it tax, but it is like tax. Suppose the tax rate is changed during the course of the year, it's applicable for the whole year. So I unless mean, otherwise I, specified, uh, <laughs> it will be well, I, for the I, whole. I, year. I think idly, idly, I think it should be prospective. This is wrong. I think keep, no, keep that, that, yeah. that that is a different issue whether it should be or not. But if you ask as a clarification, in general, such things. See when the when when this came first time, you know when the. Mm. Point two five. It came during middle of the year, and I don't think they gave exemption for. Abhi tak jo hai wo nahi. They said pura ek April se leke ek tis March. Sir, in this case, 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 sir, in this It will clearly tell you how much do you earn before the date, how much do you earn after the date. After the circular, it is clearly mentioned that clearly it is mentioned. for uh, for the year. So you know the year starting from first April. Actually, it has to. Got time into sir the IPA has to take the clarification from IBB and share with the participant sir. This is the right approach. Sir, it is very clear in the circular. Okay, sir. I have one more suggestion. I have one more suggestion. The one percent for all the IPs should have some category. Person who are getting total fees up to some amount, suppose five lakh. If one is earning five lakh per year, he should be some different category. Person who are getting five to fifteen or five to fifty lakh, they should be different. So this one percent should not be for everyone. One person is just making a fees of one lakh rupees. For him, one percent is too high. And person making one CR. For him, maybe a different perspective. So there should be a category within the one percent also. This is my suggestion to be considered by the maybe IP or IBBI. Yes.
Rajpil's uh, in case of repetition, to... sir, Ravi, sir, the jointly and severally liability, uh, would you like to clarify on that? So, the rules on joint and several come under the broad concept of vicarious liability, right? Correct. So, it will be subject to strict proof. So, any allegation made will have to be substantiated that other than the original, the nominated person, the signing partner, somebody else is also liable, will have to be substantiated by whoever is making such an allegation in the first place. Okay. The burden of proof shifts onto the person who is doing the allegation. Yes, except when the person making the allegation is different, is the inspecting authority. Then automatically it is arising out of evidence that they have collected, right? So that would. So in the inspection would see there would necessarily be an inspection if such a allegation is made by anybody on the entire team. Yeah, they have to normal course. Hmm. That's the risk that one carries in a system, any system. Yeah, uh, see, just because you're working in the, on the same office under the same registration doesn't mean that you are liable for everything that somebody else does or does not do. No, invariably, be... invariably what happens, sir, so I, I'm assuming that if it's a private limited company and an IP is formed and as directors, you do discuss all the activities and various partners, various one, whoever is doing it, there's a disclosure that, that happens internally and all that. So one cannot say that I never discuss about what work we did it was completely, he was doing on his own and all this stuff. No, Especially see, as, as a, in, a citizen, you are required to disclose or report any wrongdoing that comes to you. And that have even in normal course. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, see, these are matters of uh, prosecutorial uh, process, rules of evidence, all that will apply. Uh, but if you are asking in general, uh, would it automatically apply? The answer would be no, unless there is reason to believe. Okay. Now, reason to believe is obviously a subjective determination, which the IPA or IBBA can do. And they don't straight away <laughs> go and impose a, a penalty. Now, they, they do. First step is always inspection. <coughs> so, that will be done. So, the other question here, sorry, sir, I'm asking one continue. I hope I'm not disturbing, is... Uh, being a shareholder, being a director in an IP, uh, does it have a significance from an IBC perspective, uh, this regulation perspective? No, significance in the sense that the nominated director or partner uh, has to disclose uh, what his shareholding or contribution is. <clears throat> The individual share is not uh, nothing mandatory. There's no minimum fixed, but together all IP directors have to hold majority. Yeah, I was only saying that in, imagine you are a shareholder and not a director and uh, you continue the transaction because you are associated with the IPE, but certain transaction by certain specific directors of the IP, assuming for a second, I mean, just hypothetical, <laughs> the wrong thing happening, okay? You being only shareholders are not responsible if you are not director, Nababa. Normal correct. company correct. law will apply. No, that's exactly what I meant. Uh -huh. Company law will apply. Ah, company law will apply. Can't have be beyond. See, I just because there is something called section 238 in IBC doesn't mean that it is a Brahmastra for every when in doubt 238. Okay. But it is an ethical obligation to report any wrongdoing, no? In case you come that across... That is, as a, as a citizen of the country, it is all, all of us. And it is and also it, professional misconduct in case of uh, uh, professional bodies, no? Ab in absolutely, case, it is uh, there. The question is that in 75 years, how many people have reported on their own directors and partners unless it was not preceded by individual dispute? Then, of course, everybody reports. 
but nowadays uh, transparency and uh, ethical requirement are becoming more of uh, an importance no it becomes difficult from an evidence perspective right you cannot make an allegation just because unless you are just a whistle blower that you are suspecting something and you communicate and that is not the objective so what happens is as an individual if you are not in the core aspect of you know in the in that board then you will not have so much of information which can actually give you the power to actually make an allegation with reasonable amount of evidence absolutely if you are having evidence then only you will you are supposed to report if you are certain of wrongdoing yes mr devarpanda uh participants do you have any other question or should we proceed now sir this third amendment regulations are effective from 1st october that is what is given in there ha. which means that this point of this 1% increase is effective only from 1st october is it am i wrong sir or? i don't know my understanding would be because it says the uh, irrespective of when the amendment comes you know sir they also comes. said that they, have, they, they they shall come into force with effect from 1st october 22 Yes, but it also says that it is applicable, payable on thirtieth of April, right? And for the preceding financial year, so the old rate. See, you, if you had been paying on a monthly basis, okay, like GST, for example. Now GST is paid immediately on the, as soon as the transaction happens, whereas income tax, for example, is paid at the end of the year because we, one never knows till the end. This is equivalent to income tax, equivalent to okay. so since you are not paying it the normal way of doing it is that it is for the whole year but if you have any uh, circular or somebody was mentioning circular says something which circular i am not sure not but circular. it might be there my no amendment talks of effective date of the amendment yes it is 1st october the entire amendment is 1st october so but all those provisions which are what do you call can be applied retrospectively by necessary implication do apply retrospectively ye bhi hai rule the, the the doctrine of what do you call necessary implication also apply so what will ibba do only ibba can tell na it is there ultimately not even general of the code it is their own revenue the objective if i were ibba i would say no 1st october full year <laughs> the objective was to increase the revenue so yeah the, the the whole idea is that but when it comes to the other regulatory fee okay suppose there had been now next year let us say that is increased other than the ip okay the one which has to be paid on quarterly basis but that would be because you were already paid something it can't be applied to that part there it would definitely be prospective but sir increase is effective from 1st october as per the circular so even if we pay for the previous 6 months say from april to september we have to pay at the previous rate whatever it was 0.25% and the new rate would be effective from 1st october that would be 1% i, I said this is a matter for ibbi to clarify i don't know whether there is any circular to the effect i just said my understanding is that in such cases it is always the full financial year okay right sir. because see your your fee when you are claiming is not supposed to be affected by this technically you would have done it either way and uh, if i am sure they will clarify somebody right, would have sir. asked yeah yeah right sir. don't don't be in confusion this has to be paid for the fees of the whole year Whole year, this clearly says on the fees you earned as IP in the preceding financial year that you pay before thirtieth of April. So whatever fee you earned in the preceding financial year uh, up to thirty first March twenty twenty three has to be paid at one percent. Sir, I had a query that whether this one percent fee that uh, that is now being levied, can I add it into my invoice? And recover it from either the corporate debtor or the COC, sir. 
absolutely not don't even think of it this is to be paid from your income you can reset your fees now that you know 1% if that makes a big difference to you instead of quoting 100 rupees you got 101 as your fee but you can't recover separately at all neither this nor the regulatory fee of other parties okay you can deduct from the service provider and it can be accounted for in the uh, income tax also and the charge that is payable is an expense no professional uh, expense yes. but let us say in that case you will have to pay 1% on 101 and not on हाँ हाँ अभी आप बहनों पांच हजार रुपया पे कर रहे हैं पांच हजार एक बहुत फर्क पड़ रहा है ना आपको <laughs> यार मोस्ट ऑफ अस मेजोरिटी नाइन्टी परसेंट इट्स अ फ्यू थाउजेंड ओके एंड जिनके अर्निंग बहुत ज्यादा है दे डोंट केयर एनी वे सो बट ऑल द क्वेश्चन आर आस्क बाय अस पीपल हु एक्चुअली इट डजेंट मैटर when the fees doesn't matter when ibb is going to pay, give penalty they say 25% of the fees will it be 25% net of their fees collected or the gross fees sir gross <laughs> by when in doubt the house rules apply no no but the equity says that it cannot be more than what you have collected right what what so you the the 25% is a metric it is only that it is like in, in, they could have as well said uh, so much percentage of the, how much bsc rises over the last one week bol sakta it is just a relative reference nothing more than that it's an indexing to that but not a part of that so when they say 25% of your fee it it is only as a reference point and nothing more thank you sir that is the lighter sir participants any further doubt so uh, so ravi sir can i proceed for uh, the oh part? yes go ahead go ahead okay sure so uh, as i was going through the form enrollment form itself so as sir said that this is all about uh, the details uh, the requirements of form aa which is about your registration and so we have uh, kind of made our enrollment form also uh, accordingly so nothing more than uh, what is required is for the registration so uh, six point it says that whether the applicant was at any time in the past be recognized as an ipe so in case uh, the answer is yes then the details are to be given uh, the seventh part says whether any disciplinary proceeding has been initiated by ibpi or the ipa against any of the directors or partners of the ipe So those details are to be provided. The eight part eight point says whether the IPE is a subsidiary, joint venture, or associate of another company or body corporate. So in case that is the case, the details are to be provided. Then whether the applicant entity or any of its partners or directors, as the case may be, is a fit and proper person. I mean, this is a requirement that uh, all the the all the partners or the directors they have to be a fit and proper person. in terms of the regulation for of the ip regulations uh then uh, whether the applicant entity or any of its partner directors have been convicted for any offense so in case such is the case then the details are to be provided then the criminal proceedings uh, in case are pending then uh, whether the applicant entity or any of its directors are un are undischarged bankrupt insolvent uh, in short so in case that is the case the details are to be provided then uh, in case any additional information that may be relevant for certificate of so as i said that this is related to your certificate of registration itself uh, this is the affirmation which is to be given 
uh, I think that's all. Uh, then we have mentioned as to what are the all documents that we would need from your end. So uh, once we enroll you and then we, uh, it is the, the application for registration has to be forwarded by us, uh, IPA. So, I mean, all the documents would be required by hand. Any, any clarification that you need regarding this form, enrollment form for IP? So I would assume that uh, things are clear. Any, any, any query from Ravi, sir? Uh, Nitin, you? just wanted to check with you. Uh, when we were uh, getting registered as IPs individually, we would be paying both the fees, including the fee payable to IBBI by way of a DD and send the application to the IP who in turn after enrolling would pass it on along with the DD to IBBA. Uh, now the fees as when in case of IPEs are significantly higher. Okay, they are two lakhs each. Okay. So would you want the DD to be come with the application? And if so, uh, how soon would you dispose it off? And if you're going to take some reasonable amount of time, but uh -huh. maybe... Sir, sir, the amount has to be transferred. So there's a particular account number of IBBI. So that also I can share right now, uh, wherein the IBBI's registration. No, at, at what point of time? After you confirm the enrollment or before itself? Sir, after the enrollment. After the enrollment. So that means you will intimate that your enrollment is so-and-so, give the enrollment number, and then they have to transfer the uh, amount and produce the evidence to you. And on receipt of that, you will forward the application for the registration. Yes, sir. Okay. Nitin, I have a suggestion. Can you come to file number 8 or 9? Uh, scroll down, please. Sir, I didn't get you. Can you repeat it once? Come to uh, scroll down, come to file number 8 or file number 9. Okay, sir. This small suggestion, if you can incorporate. Please, please, sir. Uh, yeah. Just a minute. File number nine. See, yes, sir. this says whether you are a fit and proper person, yes, and sir. it's a mandatory requirement. Yes. So sir. my suggestion is this: you can move to affirmation instead of asking yes and no, because this is a mandatory requirement. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. We'll change the language, sir. Or or we will put it in the affirmation. Move, move it to affirmation. Sure, sir. Sure, sure, sir. We'll do it, sir. Sir, I had one query. So uh, uh, earlier, it, it, it was said that the sole objective of the IPE should be to support uh, the insolvency professionals. Now, if I have that object clause, do I need to amend it before uh, sending the application? Yes, sir. So I have to include that uh, IP can also IP can also act as I, uh, IRP and everything, right? Yes, so, sir. That, okay. Correct, sir. Correct. Okay. In fact, that is a mandatory requirement uh, under the regulations. All right. Participants, uh, any other doubt from Ravi, sir? Should we go for a close now? Okay, right. Yep. So, Ravi sir, thank you very much. Participants, thank you very much for taking out time for this uh, learning activity. It was great uh, interacting with you all and getting to know different thought processes and also uh, getting clarification and insights from uh, Ravi sir. So, thank you very much for your support. I think uh, now we can close the session. Thank you. Right. Thank you. For uh, another thing, uh, as I said, among us a participants list, please, please, please do change in case you, your uh, 
uh, registration is there as of an admin or any other number is written, please mention your complete name uh, as it is given in the IBPI uh, registration certificate so that we can also uh, confer you the uh, CP for that. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. Once I think some people are still putting in their uh, numbers. So keep it open for some time before you, otherwise they will not be able to raise. So, sir, so sir, I think, uh, and then- All those, I think, who, who have already registered, uh, put in their name and number can exit. Okay. Address, please do it in case you have not done. Because, sir, I mean, I've seen it very happening very frequently that uh, people struggle to uh, kind of find proof of their attendance in case they mention yeah. number or some admin or the name Lenovo and all that entries are there, then we find it difficult. Yes, like this one just now, iPhone. No. <laughs> okay. You can't give, no, you can't certify the attendance. Yes, then, sir, uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, keep it open till uh, 535. No, another three minutes should be okay. Okay, sir. I think probably you have most of them. Yes, sir. There's a uh, number. Just wait number. for the numbers to roll down. Yes, Let it come to the, the last and then close it. Sure, sir. You can keep a track at the bottom how many are still logged in. Sure, Some of them would have logged in and gone for chai. We have to wait for them to come back. <laughs> Somebody was registered as 106136. Please, if you can change it. That is the only one. Uh, rest of Sir, Just no, there's, 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 into the also. there's a somebody by the name Edmin. Um, Edmin I, uh, yeah, is this is me, there. Ajit Sooth, but I have already uh, registered in the chat box. No, sir, um, chat box it won't tally. Of... The chat box, whatever you put, has to tally because the uh, Zoom will all automatically give by name also. Actually, this so is the name must tell. This is uh, in a group, this PC is allotted. So that is the number allotted to me in the uh, group from the organization. So what do I do? Should I mention that number along with my name? No, you can You go to the top right corner. There are the three dots. There will be just click on that. You will get an option rename. OK, OK, let me just have a look because I'm not very conversant with it. Ha, just go on, on your uh, yeah, yeah. The, the four dots which are there, click there. Where, which right corner? I don't right, uh, after, after mute, there is one more blue panel, top right corner of your own individual window. Click on those dot, dotted panel. It will open a drop down menu which will show rename. Okay. Not able to? I'm sorry, I'm not able to get. Okay, tell me your name. Ajit Sood. A J I T S O O D. S O O D. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. There's somebody with the name MB. And I'll request that person also to change. Mr. N. Kumar, I can see. Sir, will you send the certificate? Will you send the certificate? Sir, we'll be sending uh, an email confirming your attendance. So do, do you have email ID of all the participants? Uh, because you have not uh, got the registration. That is true. So then, uh, then I'll request all of you to put in your email ID in the chat box. Sure. Uh, 
I think Nitin. Yes, sir. Uh, since you have not done registration. Yes, sir. What I would suggest is that you you will get uh, the names, etc. Send it to the respective uh, IPAs. Okay. Yes, and anybody who has an issue, then they can come back at that time you take care of it. Okay. But next time onwards, if you want to give like this, ask for registration where CP is being given. Sure, sir. We'll go for registration. Oh, no, 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 Sharing stop card though. Sure, sir. Okay. That admin entry is still appearing. Rendo, yeah, Chodo. By now, so many times you are told if it's still not getting corrected, that means the person is actually not attending. Right, he may have logged in, but not attending. Okay. So, sir. Uh... If it's all right, can can we close it now? Yeah, some people are still putting in. Okay, uh, 33, so at 35, close, two minutes for anybody still left. Okay. 535, close. Sharing a bit bun cut the sir. Abhi. Abhi bhi chalu hai. Achha, okay, sir. Participant, just a last minute, uh, it is 534 already. We'll be closing by 535. In case you want to correct your entry, please do it. Uh, are we required to give our email IDs? Uh, no, that would not be needed, ma'am. Okay, thank you.
Hey, but it is uh, 536 now. So uh, as decided, I am closing it now. Thank you again uh, for joining us here. And uh, whatever learning activity that we organize, it is a great encouragement for us if you join. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nitin, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi, sir. Thank Bye. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much.